Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Indian forces neutralized Lashkar commander in Operation Garol. Kashmiri activist exposes Pakistan terror conspiracy in UN. And fear and uncertainty looms large over Afghanistan after Taliban's takeover. Let's begin our show with India's union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, where a gripping seven-day encounter between our valiant security forces and terrorists reached its climax on September 19th. In this relentless battle, the forces successfully neutralized two terrorists affiliated with the notorious lashkar e taiba outfit. Guided by the Jammu and Kashmir police, the Indian Army is now fervently pursuing a series of operations to dismantle the web of Pakistan-backed terrorism that has plagued the region. In a major counter-terrorism victory, Indian security forces dealt a decisive blow to Lashkar's reign of terror. The Operation Garul unfolded in the Anantanag district of Jammu and Kashmir. Among those eliminated was Lashkar's commander Uzair Khan, a key figure responsible for a heinous attack on a joint team of Jammu and Kashmir police and the army in Gadol village. This attack resulted in the tragic loss of two esteemed army officers and one valiant Jammu and Kashmir police officer. The showdown in Anantanag began on September 13, 2023, triggered by actionable intelligence pointing to a terrorist hideout. Tragically, the terrorists were prepared for the face-off and engaged our security forces in a fierce firefight. On September 18, the lifeless body of Army soldier Pradeep Singh was discovered, bringing the tally of our brave warriors who made the ultimate sacrifice to foe. अभी तक में उजेड़ खान एलईटी कमांडर का बॉडी मिल गया उसको रिट्री भी कर लिया हम लोग एक डेड बॉडी मिलिटेंट का और दिख रहा है तो सर कोई ओवर है सर्च ऑपरेशन सिर्फ ऑन है सर्च ऑपरेशन अभी जारी रहेगा क्योंकि अब बहुत सारे एरिया खाली है ब्लेंड सेल है उसको इकट्ठा करके डिस्ट्रॉय करना पड़ेगा और तीसरा डेड बॉडी मिलिटेंट का भी नहीं मिला है उसको भी हम खोज रहे हैं टू गेन द अपर हैंड इन दिस चैलेंजिंग टेरेन सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस एम्प्लॉयड कटिंग एज टेक्नोलॉजी including drones and helicopters for relentless surveillance of the dense forest areas harboring cave-like hideouts where the terrorists had been holed up for a week. Lieutenant General KJS Dhillon, a retired veteran with an extensive service record in the region, emphasized that these terrorists had been meticulously trained in jungle and high-altitude guerrilla warfare. They exploited the unforgiving terrain and dense forest cover to evade Indian forces. These are very thick jungles. They are primary forest, secondary forest and tertiary forest. There are areas in these jungles where sun has never come down. Sun rays have not touched the land mass. So that is the type of area we are talking about. It's a Pir Panjal range on the northern side and we are talking about the steep climbs, broken rocky patches, and of course the thick forest cover. In a separate incident, security forces thwarted the infiltration attempts of three terrorists trying to breach the line of control in Baramula district. The forces not only eliminated the infiltrators, but also confiscated a cache of weapons, explosives, and currency notes from their possession. The Chinar Corps reported interference from a Pakistani post in the recovery of the third terrorist's body. Allegations surfaced that Pakistani soldiers provided covering fire to facilitate the terrorist's escape. AK-47, AK-74, seven magazines, kuch ammunition hai, aur ek Chinese pistol, no, kuch round and uh, kuch grenades bhi hai iske kuch Pakistan currency bhi hai and uh, some Indian currency. We will forward the details and the most important thing is that it has been recovered by 5 ID in it. Pakistan's persistent efforts to disrupt peace in India 
orchestrated from behind the scenes have become an unfortunate recurrence despite facing internal challenges including a struggling economy Pakistan relentlessly fuels terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir India on the other hand maintains a well structured framework to counteract such threats and preserve the tranquility of the region Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's recent actions driven by political motivations have sent shockwaves through diplomatic circles his unsubstantiated accusations against the Indian government made in pursuit of votes challenge traditional diplomatic norms and sovereignty principles Newsweek South Asia does an analysis where we delve into the fallout of Trudeau's actions and their potential consequences on international relations Over the past number of weeks Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen Hardeep Singh Nijjar In a startling development the usually calm and measured world of international diplomacy found itself rocked by the political ambitions of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau Trudeau's aspirations for political gain on the home front appear to have clouded his judgment on the global stage. His unsubstantiated accusations against the Indian government delivered with fervor within the confines of the Canadian Parliament have left diplomatic relations between Canada and India hanging by a thread. In a bid to secure votes from Canada's influential Khalistan supporters, Trudeau has taken an ill-conceived, short-sighted step of leveling serious accusations against the Indian government. He alleges government of India's agents involvement in the murder of Hardeep Singh Nijjar, a Sikh separatist leader residing in Canada who had been designated a terrorist by India. As I've said, um, India and the government of India needs to take this matter with the utmost seriousness. We are doing that. We are not uh, looking to um, provoke or escalate. We are simply laying out the facts as uh, we understand them, and uh, we want to work with the government of India uh, to lay everything clear and to ensure uh, that there is proper proof. What makes this accusation particularly eyebrow-raising is the stark absence of concrete evidence to back these charges, leaving many, including the opposition leader, to question the wisdom of Trudeau's actions in the realm of diplomacy. Trudeau's actions have set in motion a series of events that have sent shock waves through diplomatic circles. His move challenges the traditional notions of sovereignty and mutual respect between nations and it has not gone unnoticed on the international stage. This move also threatens to unravel years of collaborative efforts between Canada and India and serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance that diplomacy seeks to maintain. Trudeau's relentless pursuit of implicating the Indian government in Nijjar's murder has been met with skepticism and disbelief in India. Moreover, his actions are perceived as an unwarranted intrusion into India's sovereignty, a line that should never be crossed in international relations. India, not one to take such allegations lightly, responded with decisiveness. it expelled a canadian diplomat with a swift hand leaving no room for ambiguity about its displeasure with canada's groundless allegations india also suspended the visa application review process at its high commission and consulates in canada citing security concerns as a driving force behind this decision you are aware of the security threats being faced by our high commission and consulates in canada This has disrupted their normal functioning. Accordingly, our High Commission and Consulates are temporarily unable to process visa applications. We will be reviewing the situation on a regular basis. 
This stern response underscores India's unwavering commitment to safeguarding its global image and its desire to maintain diplomacy rooted in mutual respect and evidence-based discourse. Trudeau's unsupported accusations have not only exposed a glaring lack of diplomatic finesse but have also disrupted the delicate balance of international relations. Maybe Trudeau and his team are not aware it is imperative to adhere to the principles of truth, honour and sovereignty in international diplomacy, the bedrock upon which diplomatic relations are built. Canada has already been seen as a safe haven for extremists and those who seek to disrupt global peace. As it grapples with the fallout from these allegations, it must also contend with the broader implications for its diplomatic standing. If there is any country, if you're talking about reputational uh, issues and reputational damage, if there's one, any country that uh, needs to look at this, I think it is Canada and its growing reputation as a place, uh, as a safe haven for terrorists, for extremists and for organized crime and I think that's a country that needs to worry about its uh, international reputation. In a landscape where diplomacy is an art form, Trudeau's accusations serve as a stark reminder that political expediency should never overshadow the principles of a responsible diplomacy. Canada now finds itself facing an uphill diplomatic challenge. Trudeau's accusations have not only strained relations with India but also raised concerns about Canada's reputation on the international stage. The world watches closely as these events unfold with many nations hoping for a swift and amicable resolution. Pakistan has been perpetuating terrorism in India's Jammu and Kashmir for decades. This has led to the deaths of thousands of innocent people and has caused immense suffering to the people of the region. In the past few months, there have been a number of deadly attacks in Jammu and Kashmir, including the recent Anantnag encounter which resulted in the death of four security personnel. Recently, a Kashmiri socio-political activist criticized Pakistan for sponsoring terrorism in India's Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir in an intervention at the 54th session of UN Human Rights Council. Jammu and Kashmir has endured immense suffering due to Pakistan's sponsored terrorism with violence, bloodshed and fear plaguing the region for decades. This terrorism has claimed countless innocent lives. According to government data, around 41,000 people, consisting of 14,000 civilians, 5,000 security personnel and 22,000 militants have died because of the insurgency as of March 2017. Recently, Kashmiri activist Taslima Akhtar denounced Pakistan's role in sponsoring terrorism during her address at the 54th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. Hailing from Srinagar, she was tirelessly worked as a social activist, shedding light on the untold stories of the terrorism's victims in the valley. I have been working as a social activist, exploring the cases of untold stories of atrocities committed on the innocent victims of terrorism in the valley. Unfortunately, since my childhood, I have witnessed violence and killings of innocent persons by Pakistan-sponsored terrorism, unbearable sufferings of women, children, old and young alike at the hands of these terrorists have led me to work for the cause of seeking justice for the families of victims. I have come across fearful stories of acts of terror and massacres. Following the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019, India intensified its diplomatic efforts to expose Pakistan's state-sponsored terrorism and gain international condemnation. By presenting the stark reality of cross-border terrorism, India effectively dismantled Pakistan's narrative isolating it on the global stage. Furthermore, investigative agencies have launched a crackdown on separatist organizations like Jamaat-e-Islami Jammu and Kashmir and Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front. 
These organizations received funding from Pakistan with the aim of keeping unrest alive in Jammu and Kashmir. Funds flowed through various channels including illicit activities like drug trafficking, smuggling and extortion. The money financed weapons, terrorist training and acts of violence. These organizations disguised themselves as charities, religious institutions and socio-cultural bodies to evade suspicion while actively promoting terrorism and radical ideologies. Uh, the total control of POK is under Pakistani Army and uh, Spy Agency, ISI. And uh, that is the only reason POK has become safe haven for terrorist organizations. Pakistan is pushing, uh, 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 you know, uh, terrorists and getting our, our uh, youth into uh, this uh, terrorist uh, act or uh, this kind of extremist uh, mindset is uh, very uh, worrisome and uh, I think this is high time for us, this is high time for uh, Indian government to take final call to destroy terror industry across border. Whether through terror attacks, illicit drugs or radicalization of Kashmiri youth, Pakistan continues its anti-Indian activities. Islamabad's fixation on Kashmir has deprived its own people of food and development. Despite internal instability, a faltering economy and the international isolation, Pakistan remains unwavering in its support for terrorists, regardless of the consequences. The people of Afghanistan are going through the darkest moments once in a generation. Now, as the country is facing economic, security and humanitarian crisis. Ever since the Taliban group seized power in Afghanistan, it started pushing Afghan people back in time. They have systematically erased women from public life. Establishing a Stone Age regime with barbaric laws, they are reversing decades of Afghan people's achievement. Recently, the UN Rights Chief, Walker Turf, during his speech at the UN Human Rights Council, stated that the human rights in Afghanistan were in a state of collapse, accusing the Taliban of a shocking level of oppression of women and girls. The Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan in August 2021 marked a significant decline in the nation's human rights landscape. They imposed harsh restrictions on freedom of expression and assembly using violence to suppress dissent. However, one of the most alarming consequences of their rule has been the devastating impact on women and girls. Many girls were forced out of school and now face early marriages. Women lost jobs and struggled to support their families. Some were attacked for opposing the Taliban and forced to flee. Experts see these actions as violations of international law and human rights impacting the physical and mental health of women and girls. UN Rights Chief Walker Turf recently described Afghanistan's human rights as collapsing, citing shocking levels of oppression against women and girls by the Taliban. Human rights in Afghanistan are in a state of collapse acutely affecting the lives of millions of women, men, girls and boys. Violations of human rights in the country are not new. Decades of armed conflict mean that Afghanistan has known violence and injustice for much of its recent history. But the dynamic imposed by the Taliban since they took power two years ago constitutes a systematic assault on the rights and freedoms of the population, which particularly targets women and girls and excludes them from, the most, from most aspects of public and daily life. The shocking level of oppression of Afghan women and girls is immeasurably cruel. Afghanistan has set a devastating precedent as the only country in the world where women and girls are denied access to secondary and higher education. Restrictions are becoming increasingly severe. 
quelling women and girls' fundamental freedoms, effectively confining them to the four walls of their homes, to invisibility. The Taliban's return and the dissolution of the previous republic on August 15, 2021, rolled back progress in protecting human rights and free society values. This particularly affected women and vulnerable groups, sparking serious concerns about the current human rights situation. Over the past two decades, Afghanistan made significant strides in human rights, democracy, gender equality, education, healthcare and inclusivity. It served as a regional example with a thriving media landscape and open discourse. However, ever since their return, uncertainty prevails, raising fears of human rights violations for activists, former government employees, women and minorities. Under the Taliban rule, extrajudicial killings are widespread, targeting former government associates, armed group members and those not following Taliban rules. And over the past two years, there has been a systematic erosion of the laws and institutions that once provided some protection for human rights. The constitution has been suspended and laws are now made by edicts rather than through consultative processes. Laws that once provided a framework for the protection of women from violence or an enabling environment for media have been suspended. Corporal punishments and public executions have resumed and there are ongoing reports of extrajudicial killings, torture and ill treatment, as well as arbitrary arrests and detentions. Despite repeat, repeated statements by the de facto authorities regarding the general amnesty, we continue to document human rights violations against individuals affiliated with the former government and its security forces. Afghanistan faces grave difficulties with Taliban rulers ignoring world leaders' demands and instead blaming the West for the country's challenges. The Taliban group refused to acknowledge that a more moderate ideology could have led to a better situation in Afghanistan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.